Today, we're gonna to talk about five reasons you're not getting sales in your home baker business. Hopefully you're not having this problem, but sometimes it's good season, bad season. So even if, you, if you're if you doing well now, it could you could lose some sales later, or if you don't have sales now, you could do better later. Hi, Sarah. Okay. If you're just joining, let me know what state you're in. I'm just curious. I don't, I know some people here. I know Sarah's in Florida. Tell me what state you're in and what you're selling if you want to. Just get a feel of who's all on here. Toronto, Canada. Virginia, and I guess you probably sell cookies looking at your name. South Carolina, New York, Illinois, okay. Um, I'm in Ohio for anyone that doesn't know. Puerto Rico, Toronto, cookies and bars, okay. Florida, cakes, Texas, macarons. Hi, Lori, I sell cakes. The people that sell cakes, do you sell them by the slice or do you do full cakes, like weddings and stuff? Uh, French macarons, California. Cool, okay. So what I see a lot for a reason that people aren't getting orders, or if you notice that you get them and then they go away, you get them, they go away, like it's not steady. This isn't in any order of importance, but I'm gonna start with this one. Arkansas, cookies, cakes, brownies, whole cakes for events like weddings. Okay. Pennsylvania, st Steeler fan. Uh, cupcakes, macarons, full cakes. Okay. Um, okay, so number one is, and once again, not in any order, not posting enough. You don't want to be annoying. You are not posting on Instagram. You're not posting on Facebook. You're not sending emails to your email subscribers, people that subscribe to be on your email list to hear from you. You're not posting enough there. So that is one of the reasons you're not getting enough sales. If you're not posting, I don't like to say like this, there's a rule. <laughs> Sarah said, oops, didn't post yet today. I was just gonna say, I don't want to say that like, there's a rule you have to post every day. I definitely don't do that. I know that, you know, life gets in the way, especially people that have a home bakery business. But if you can even just post on your story every day, do something that lets people know that you're still there, keeps your business in the front of their mind because who they see the most after a while, they're just gonna go with that person. Like if, if they totally forget about you, they're not gonna be able to buy from you. So post at least something every day, if you can, at least every other day. Okay, now, your customers can't find you or they don't know how to find you. So this can be, if you have, if you don't wanna do a website, that's fine. I recommend doing a website, but if your customers can't find you, put something in your um, story highlights. So you've got your Instagram page, you've got the description of what you do, then you've got your story highlights. If you could just put like where to find us, anything like that so people can see like the markets you're at, how to order, anything like that would be good. Okay, another, if you're just joining, tell me what's, where you're from or where you sell out of and what you're selling. So third thing is your customers don't see your post. So if you're posting on social media every day, you could only be reaching 10% of your audience. That is why the email list is so important. And I think I'm gonna go into more detail. I'm gonna do a live tomorrow and I'll go into more detail about all of these things and how to do it. But um, yes, your customers aren't seeing your posts. You are depending on the algorithm on Instagram, on Facebook, and you're only getting maybe 10 likes, five likes, because not because your, your customers and your followers don't like your post, but because they don't even see it or they see it too late. Like they will, you'll post it on Wednesday. They're not gonna see it till Saturday sometimes. And then the event is gone. Cookies out of Dallas, Texas. What kind of cookies? Um, so the way to get around that is 
email list, like I was saying. So there is no algorithm with the email list. You get someone's email, you send them an email, they get the email. And a lot of your customers, you can post this on your Instagram, a lot of your customers want to be on your email list. They want to know when and where to find you. Like they don't wanna not see your post until Saturday, but they don't think I should go check out their page and see what they're doing. So you gotta make sure that you make it easy for them to find you. And try to make it so you come to them and they don't have to come find you. So fourth reason is um, no one knows that you're selling anything and no one knows where you are. You should absolutely have at least your state in your bio. If you don't wanna do, I know that some people don't like that kind of stuff because of privacy, but if you're gonna sell, you're gonna have to let people know at least what city you're in, at least what state. So if you can put, like I would have Troy, Ohio, because if you're in a small town like that and someone comes across your page, if you don't have that on there, they're never gonna know. But if you're in a small town and someone sees Troy, Ohio, that is gonna be really exciting for them. So put what you sell put where you're located like if you don't have that go do that right now put where you're located city state if you can um that will be incredibly helpful and you can even put like i know that you only have so many characters you can use in the in the bio but if you could put something like if you if i'm in troy ohio and i deliver to dayton area i would put that in there too troy ohio delivery to and then surrounding areas and I would put Dayton wherever I would deliver to. Um, okay, so no one knows what you sell, where you are. So make sure you also put in there just really clear, just make your bio as clear as possible. So I would put, like when I was a home baker, I would put French macarons, Troy, Ohio, and then a way telling them how to order. So link in my bio or I would put like an arrow that says order here or go to the story highlight something just makes it super easy with an arrow how to order or something like that make it as easy as possible are there any questions so far if you do have questions you can start putting them and then I will just go once I'm done with this I'll go back through and answer you can ask macaron questions or home bakery or what I'm talking about today Okay, this might be the most important one and the one that no one likes to hear, but if you're not getting any sales and like you have, you're posting on social media a lot and you feel like you're being active on social media, hi June, it could just be because your pictures look bad. Your profile looks bad. It doesn't look professional. As home bakers, it's a little bit of a risk for people to buy from home bakers because there's no most states there's no inspection or people don't even know there's an inspection so they think home bakery they think kids dogs like people are baking out of their home there's no way to see what it looks like if it's clean so you have to make sure that your page is so professional looking and so clean and if you're taking any behind the scene photos make it look so good if you can't make it look so good like if you have an older kitchen that just doesn't look good like the place that i had my home bakery when i first started the apartment it was absolutely not cute i just didn't post pictures of it like even if it's as clean as you can get it just don't post pictures if you can't have it look really nice so just focus on close-ups of your baked goods put like a little fake background um, what is the best way to take pictures? So there's a lot of good ways to take pictures. When I first started, I only had my phone and I didn't have any like fancy lighting or fancy backdrops. I have a, a couple videos on YouTube on how to take pictures on a budget. And then if you have a little more money to spend, how to take pictures that way. So go on YouTube and that'll explain it better. But basically I had an old Amazon box I cut up flattened out and then put a um a little bit of marble contact paper on top and then put i used a poster board as my like the light for the sunlight would come in through the window the poster board would bounce the sunlight off and i just had marble fake marble on an amazon box and i took the picture with my cell phone like it was 
looked it looked really bad if you were to zoom out and see what I was taking it on. But the pictures look fine. They only saw, I focused on the macarons, I focused on the flavors, and I just didn't put a lot of like props or anything in there either. And because I didn't know how to take pictures well, so I didn't put props because I knew if I put props in, it's not gonna look good. Like I don't know how to make the props look good. It'll just look cluttered, so I just didn't put them in. That sounds like a janky version of my setup. I wish that we could have some sort of thread that shows like the behind the scenes because it is hilarious what it looks like compared to the picture. Edited through Lightroom and CapCut has brought my pictures up a notch. Yes, now in those videos on YouTube, I will sh I show you the exact apps I used, but I did, oh geez, I think it's called a color story. Um, I know there's two by the same company. It's a color story and design kit. I'm pretty sure design kit is more graphics and a color story is the photos. So I would, but Lightroom's good too. Anything that you can just kind of tweak it a little bit. Like I would go in there and I show you this on the YouTube video, but I would go in there. I would just up the exposure a little bit because I was using natural light. I didn't have any fake lights in there. Um, I would up the exposure a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I would maybe just do a couple tweaks. You don't want to make it look too edited because that's kind of obvious. You just want to kind of bring out the natural brightness of the photos. Then after doing that for years on my camera, I mean on my phone with natural light, with um, that crappy background, then I got paper rolls a real camera and I even got a cheap camera like as far as cameras go mine was like I think $300 or something including the lens so I also linked that in the YouTube video in the more upgraded version there's a beginner one for cheaper photos and then there's a more advanced and it's not even advanced it's just what I learned doing it myself so that's when I got paper rolls I had more space paper rolls um, lighting. So I did not use natural light. I blacked out the windows. I used blackout curtains on the windows and I only used the controlled lighting from inside my room because I didn't want any light to like differ between photos. Like I wanted every photo to look the same. And most of the time I was taking my pictures at like three or four in the morning. So I got a couple different lights that I could use a camera that I tethered. I had a cord that I tethered it to my computer so I could see it on the screen really big. I go into it in the YouTube video, but basically you don't need all that stuff at first, but if you do, it's still, you can do a cheaper setup that it does look a lot better, but it's not that big of a difference. Like if you're doing just pictures of close up of your baked goods, like so many of the photos that look really good on Instagram that do really well, are just like amateur photographers holding something, taking a picture of it with their phone. Like they just focus on making the thing look really good. Like if you could break it open, show what the cross section looks like, show it being drizzled. Like think about what makes you think, oh my gosh, that looks so good. And take that, take a photo of that. And then once you get really good, then you can start to put props in. I still am not comfortable with props. Like go to, um, Half-Baked Harvest, she has a blog and she takes the most beautiful photos I've ever seen of food. She does a lot of props. Like she knows what she's doing with props. I'm not there yet. So I still keep the props out and just focus on the macarons when I take photos. Why did I get off on that rant? Oh, you said how to take better photos. So basically go look at the YouTube videos. <laughs> Ma'am, you can do props. It's hard, it's stressful, okay? <laughs> I don't feel comfortable with props yet. Um, it's just easier. And then once you get like poses, I call them poses. I spend, I spend too much time with macarons, but I call them poses and I will just, you'll know what looks good. Like you'll know, okay, I can stack three on top or if I put them here, here and here, and then just do like, I have my series of macaron poses that I do for every flavor. And then you rotate them throughout your Instagram feed and no one knows they're doing like the same poses and no one cares. Like you can repeat stuff. You don't have to come up with a new idea for every photo. 
and you can use the same photos over again. Like once you get a, once you have so many flavors and you get so many photos of them, if you're taking 10 photos of every flavor, you're gonna have like so many ready to go that you can just post and then just keep posting. And then eventually you can post the same. If you have a good picture of a chocolate macaron from two years ago, you can post it again. No one's gonna notice. I just copied other people's photos I liked until I got the hang of it. Um, yeah, like look at how they set it up. That's why I liked Half-Baked Harvest. Look at how they set it up and um, just put your macarons there. Like the composition is the hard part for me, like figuring out how to make it like flow and stuff. And that's why props are hard for me. But if you can put like fabric in the back, like get some tool or something that you just put in the back that you kind of drape there that's not necessarily a prop, but just add some texture. I love your piano prop behind you. I, I, I couldn't find anywhere else to put it. I didn't want this to be music themed, but. Um, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, you play the flute, uh, don't you? Um, but yeah, look at other people's photos and just kind of use the same composition they use. How about pop-ups? The fees are too expensive for me. So uh, that's always wild when people tell me that because if you look around like places that aren't used to doing pop-ups, most of the pop-ups I did around here didn't cost anything. So keep looking. I don't know where you are. If you're in a city and people have already caught on to pop-ups, they're probably gonna charge you. But keep looking. Maybe if you're in a city, go outside of the city a little bit. Oh, did you say you're in Toronto? Because here it was like, I had to tell them what pop-ups were. So if you could find maybe some out of the box places that you know your customers are gonna be that don't usually do pop-ups, it could be a really great place for you to like start a pop-up, be consistent there. Are you talking about pop-up events? Like, like you go in a store, like you go in a store and you set up and you sell there? Because yeah, we don't have, like a lot of people didn't know about this here, but it's a smaller area. Even in Dayton, that isn't that big of an area. It was kind of like you were trying to get the people into your shop. So people would like ask, hey, can you come do a pop-up? Like they would be asking me to come do a pop-up. Um, and then once you do get big enough, maybe you can kind of use that as leverage to lower the event fee. Is that what you're talking about? Are you talking about pop-up, like pop-up shops? Okay, I'm done saying what I have to say. So if anyone has any questions, I did two coffee shops and those were only free ones. Yeah, I would, if they're too expensive at first, I would go around and look at different places that are kind of out of the box, like I was saying. I mean, you could do pop-ups anywhere. Like some people in the Blueprint program, they do them, some of the best ones were at like a brewery, um, a vineyard, places like that, that have, they don't necessarily serve a lot of dessert, but they have people going there for alcohol or they'll do like, they will have a food truck there and then you can do a pop-up there. So events and fairs, events usually are more like markets and stuff. Um, and it depends. Sometimes they're really worth it. I was, we were in the coaching call today in the Blueprint program talking about what some of us have paid for pop-up events, not pop-up events, for just events like markets, fairs and stuff. Um, one of the girls said she paid $900 for a wedding event, but made it back. So she didn't make it back there, but she made it back through people who booked her for their weddings. So stuff like that, like $900 is a lot, but if you're gonna book three weddings from that, two weddings, even one wedding, one big wedding, it's worth it. So, but that would be a lot as, a, as you're starting. But um, one of the other girls said $800 for a three day event. So, but then there's also some that, there were some farmer's markets around here that was 125 for the whole summer of farmer's markets. So this is gonna be saved. I will save this if you missed the beginning. I will save this on my feed so you can go back and you can watch the whole thing and you can like fast forward and stuff. Okay. Oh, I see one more question. 
If there's any more questions, put it in the comments. I will try to answer it. Now that the farmer's market's over, how else can I drive traffic to my website? Okay, so are you in an area where you can, well, you can do pop-ups anywhere. If, it's okay if you're late, you can rewatch it. And I'm gonna be doing another one tomorrow going over how you can get more sales. So I'm gonna to touch on that question more tomorrow, but basically you can still do pop-ups. Markets are over, you can still do pop-ups. Some of them make you go outside. I probably wouldn't do those if you're in a cold area, but you can do pop-up events inside places. So if you can do pop-ups, do as many as you can. As often as you can get in front of your potential customers, do that. If you can meet them, the thing that we want to avoid as home bakers is not letting anyone like start to trust us as bakers. Like the problem is that they think this is possibly shady. This could be gross behind the scenes. Is it sanitary? You know, like there's no way for them to walk into a shop and see that you're reliable. So if you can go to a market and meet them, then that's going to be a really good way. Oh yeah. Do you have any resources for how to write a newsletter for our email list? So that is a good idea. Of, maybe I can do a live on that because Basically, it's too much information right now, but are you asking like actual wording or just what to include? Is it important to have a website? So in the, in the Blueprint program, I teach how to have a website. I think it's important. There are a lot of students and other people that I've helped grow their bakeries that don't have a website. They just have an order form, but those are mostly people that want to keep it like part-time. If you're gonna do it full time, if you want to like make this your job and eventually a bakery, I would definitely have a website. There are a lot of different ways to have websites now than like spending a lot of money to have someone code it for you or hiring a designer, all this stuff. Like almost everyone in the program does it themselves from what I teach them. It is not as hard as you think it is. Oh, that's a good idea. I post my serve safes. Um, certificate of events and it's optional okay so I tell a lot of people to do that put it in their Instagram bio because although most like non home bakers they don't know what that means it's still nice to see serve safe certified if you can just certify it up there like that is a good way to show people that you know what you're doing because you would be so surprised no offense to anyone and some the people in some of these groups, but after reading some of the questions, I do not want to eat at a home bakery. <laughs> like, so having that, like, is just a great way to show that you know not to, like, keep dairy out overnight. Like, simple things that some people might not know, having that on there is great. How do I find event planners to work with? Okay. Um, I would go to wedding events, even if you don't go as a vendor, you could go as a customer. You could pay whatever it is to get in there. Like you're having a wedding, like you're a bride, going in there and then just talking to the event planners, giving them your card. Like if you don't want to go into these wedding vendor events and spend a couple hundred dollars to give out samples to the possible people that are going to buy from you go in there give out business cards to the other vendors talk to them get to know them hold on um talk to them get to know them and then i mean you're probably not going to want to bring samples into this event but maybe you can schedule a time that you can drop off samples to them so they can try them they can recommend them to their brides to their grooms Okay. Um, also going to like events like that for, there's a lot of like events for wedding planners, photographers, stuff like that, where they are helping each other go to stuff like that. Thank you for the hearts. Um, so I wouldn't worry about being pushy. I've never written one before and I don't want to be pushy. I mean, unless you're like in all caps, 
yelling at them, telling them to buy your product or else, I don't think it's going to be too pushy. And honestly, that would be kind of funny. <laughs> like if a, a home baker was yelling at me through email, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But I wouldn't worry about being too pushy. I would just... With email, you do have to be careful that you're not sending too many out because it can get annoying, and they'll but they'll unsubscribe. But if you're just simply informing them of where you're going to be, maybe including some reviews in there, like of people that have tried the flavor you're selling, like that's that's good. Um, anything like that that you're just informing them, whatever you want them to know, like this is where you can buy them. This is a new flavor. Just be very simple use as few words as possible and give them the easiest instructions like just so simple this is the flavors for the month this is how to buy them this is how to place an order this is what's going to happen once you place your order just keep it so simple best platforms for websites so i teach shopify in the program um, some people in the program like Wix, some people like Squarespace. If it depends, if you're going to be, if customers are going to place an order on your website and give you credit card information, you have to be careful. Like some people use WordPress because they think it's cheaper, but if it's different if you're making a blog than if you're selling something on your website. If someone is putting their their information their address, their credit card information into your website, you have to be a lot more careful than if you're just writing a blog. So making a website on WordPress is doable for someone who's not a designer as a blogger, but as someone that is doing it as somewhere where you're actually making the transaction on the website, you have to be really careful that all the right security is in place. So that is why I recommend like Shopify for that or Squarespace or something like that where they handle the security and it's not optional. Like they handle the payment stuff. It's not going through you and they host it for you. So if you do WordPress, you have to get, a, you maybe GoDaddy, Bluehost, you have to provide the hosting and Squarespace, Shopify, I think Wix, they provide the hosting for you. So you don't have to worry about all that. Um, also, if you have WordPress, you can transfer it over. But that's, I teach Shopify because also Squarespace is more not, well, as of, I don't know about what it used to be, but Shopify is more for transactions, Shopify. So actually like making purchases on the website because everything's, you're going to think, okay, WordPress is cheaper. I'm getting it hosted for this much a uh, year. Um, WordPress doesn't cost much, but then the next, I think it's like after like the first year, Bluehost or whatever, the price goes up. Once you add on all the security things you need on WordPress, the price goes up. Same with Squarespace. It looks like it's cheaper, but once you add on more products, like I think you only get a certain amount of products for the cheapest one. Once you add on more products, it's going to be more expensive. Shopify just ends up being the best one. Uh, at a pop-up shop, do you recommend greeting every customer? I noticed there were some regulars that went past my booth straight to register. So I kind of feel it out. If someone clearly looks like they don't want to talk to me, I don't. But if they look at me, I will just smile and say hi. Sometimes they'll come over. Um, I've noticed that you do have to kind of seem approachable. Like if you're sitting down a lot of times, they don't want to come to you. They don't want to bother you. Like if there's a sample... If it looks like a sample and you're standing up, they're more likely to try it. And if you're like making a semi nice face, they're more likely to come over than if you're sitting down on your phone and the samples aren't clear that they're samples. Like it's very rare that someone's gonna come up to you and be like, what are you doing? Do you have a sample there that I could try? Like you have to just kind of look approachable, try not to be on your phone, try to just maybe smile a little bit. I didn't like going out, but some of the people in the program, they go out, they go talk to people. And honestly, they're probably doing the best because they're going out and talking to people and getting them to come in. I was always a little scared of doing that. But if you're not scared of doing that, that would be great. Going out with samples and being like, do you want to try one? Do you want to try one? 
and you're not bothering them. Think about it, Costco or Sam's Club. Are you annoyed by the sample person? No, you want free samples. Um, okay, I think I got all the questions. Wait, oh, never mind. I just want to thank you for your lovely attitude, offering your help with honest thoughts simply if you're just if you're saying hi. Thank you. Um, okay, I think I got all the questions answered. I'm going to do another one tomorrow about how do you get more sales. So I know we touched on it a little bit, but so if you have any questions, bring them tomorrow. I'm going to do it at seven o'clock again, but bring those tomorrow and then I will do a little um, live on how to get some more sales for your business. Yeah, outside of their booth. So um, they'll like step out from behind the table, which always scared me. I never wanted to do that. I stayed behind my table. They'll step out from behind the table, walk around with samples. I was always alone. Um, but I mean, after a while, the vendors next to you, they'll watch your booth. Like you get to know the vendors that are next to you and it's just great. So if you are, if you have them, you can say, can you watch my booth? I'm going to go hand out samples. They'll absolutely. Some of them will even take orders for you. Like after a while, if you're doing farmer's markets or events regularly, you're going to get to know the vendors next to you. Um, but go out from behind the booth, go, this is if you really want to sell, go and just hand out samples to people. And if you can wear some sort of branded thing, if you have a hat on that says, if you have um, a shirt, if you have an apron or something, if you can hand out business cards, that might be a lot of business cards to hand out. And if they don't want them, they can get thrown away. But just telling them, we've got more over here. We've got more flavors over here. Just everyone loves free samples. Don't be scared to go out and do that. Okay, if you missed this, um, I'm gonna post it and you can go rewatch it, you can fast forward and stuff. And then tomorrow at seven, come with questions about sales, how to grow, and I'm gonna have some tips tomorrow. Okay, bye.